So we are going to upload some things to Amazon S3 today. That's the whole point of this lecture. The first, sixty percent of this lecture is pushing buttons and typing things in input boxes on Amazon. So it looks like a long lesson, but a lot of it's just screenshots of buttons and inputs. So let's have some fun now, shall we? Uh, I believe I asked all of you earlier to sign up for Amazon accounts um, for the web services. I'm pretty sure all of you have done that. Um, so there's no weird starting code. Our servers are running, setting it up, yada, yada, yada. We've all created our accounts. Signing into console, you should see root user. So let's all let's all sign up. Let's do that. So we're going to sign in as root user. And we're greeted with this screen. Is there anybody that does not see this screen? Apparently I'm a robot and I cannot complete the captcha. I'm, I'll be there in the moment. Oh, wait. Let me know once you've passed your robot test. My screen looks a teeny bit different, um, but it's the same page. <laughs> so I'm just going to It looks like this. Uh, oh, no. It went over that way. It has, Do you have a get started thing as well, Erica? It has build a solution showing yeah. up. I think it's like, we don't Find somewhere it. where you just need to click on services. all services. Yeah. You just need to expand that. Ah, okay. Thank you. Sebastian, are you done proving that you're not a robot yet? Yeah, which is okay, good, good or bad news, depending on how you look at it. Okay. Well, it depends. We're not in an episode of Battlestar Galactica, so we're not going to have to like throw you off the ship or anything. Or an airlock. The airlock. I know. Oh, Is that an Among Us reference? No, that was a Battlestar Galactica reference. Oh, same thing. Where's my ban button? Can I ban him from Slack and Zoom? Some third rate, crappy new hipster video game compared to one of the greatest television series of all time. No. Okay. Some Sorry. strong feelings there, Ben. Yeah. It's so good. Why is it not streaming anymore? It's Sorry, so Ben. Good. They didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Is it not streaming anymore? I tried looking for it. I couldn't find it. Pretty sure it's on Amazon. You just have to pay You can stream it, it on the or streaming Peacock. service Peacock That's right. by NBC. There you go. Don't. <laughs> All right. Okay. Peacocks are terrifying in real life, by the way. Has anyone seen a peacock like in real life? Like, not between you and a fence, like you and a peacock up close. They're terrifying. My teacher had one. Yeah, that's weird. They uh, let him roam free the around the Austin Zoo. Yeah. They do. And it, it, yeah, they're, down, they're, they're downtown in Austin. There's like a peacock park, and it's like the things that dreams or nightmares are made of. But, OK, I'm done talking about peacocks now. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some work. Um, oh, that was recorded too. Lovely. All right. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days, guys. It's my last day that I have to teach y'all. So I mean, I'm going to teach y'all for the rest of the class, but like, this you're is so close. Lectures. I know. I'm almost there. All right. So we're going to click on all services and we're going, we're going to go to this I am or I am. Um, we're going to click on that. So let's click on that together, shall we? Cool. Now we should have this little dashboard. You're probably not going to have all this stuff because you don't have that stuff yet, but we're going to make that stuff for you. So once we've clicked on that, we're going to click on users over here. Does everyone have users? Anyone not have users? Good. Oh, we're having so much fun. You're not going to have any of these. Because you don't have any of these. Because this is new to you. So we're going to create one. We're going to go to add user. Just like that little button says. OK. 
Okay, and we're going to add a user. You can call your user whatever you want. I'm going to call mine even more cat collector. I'm just going to, you know what, I'm going to say cat collector uh, max. No, how about two, three, three it is. I have three. I have so many cat collectors. I should probably delete some of my cat collectors. I don't have that many cats I need to collect. So we're going to do cat collector. We're going to click on programmatic access. This is important because it's going to enable an access key and secret access key uh, for our dev tools. So we're going to have to keep, keep track of those permission keys. And we're going to show you how to hide secret keys in your Python files so that they don't get uploaded to the interwebs. And we're going to click on next. Scroll down. OK, cool. Now we're going to get started with groups. Where it looks a little different. Um, I already have this group set up on mine, but you all don't. So go ahead and click on create group. And I'm going to give it a different name just for demo purposes. Is this the only thing we're putting in that group? It's really the only thing we're putting in that group. You want to type here Django hyphen S3 hyphen assets just like it says right here in the lesson. And you're going to scroll down. Actually, you know what I would do is I would search for it. I would search for S3 full. That's the only one that you need to click. It should say Amazon S3 full access. If you click something other than Amazon S3 full access, your app is going to break. You're going to get bad errors. It's not going to work and it's going to take us forever to troubleshoot. So make sure the only thing that you click on is Amazon S3 full access. And then go ahead and hit create group. I already have that group. So I'm going to leave that. Okay. So we're going to click on that. Is there anyone that needs me to wait? We all good? Say something now, raise your hand. Let me know if you need me to wait. I'll wait. Okay, we're good. So we're gonna click on that, we're gonna hit next. We don't need to do anything here. We're gonna hit review. Okay, don't need to do anything here. We're gonna hit create user. Success. That's exciting, right? It's always good to get green. Now, what we need to do is we need to copy this information down. So we can, but we're gonna copy these down before we navigate away from this page, right? We could leave this open if we really wanted to, but we're just gonna write them down. So I'm gonna open up, uh, how about a text? Hey, Matt. I don't see when it says next tags. Let me share your screen. Okay. So click on policies up top blue. Scroll down to, okay, now Amazon S3 full access. Don't click on that. Click on the box next to it, the little highlight tab, the checkbox thing. Okay, go, go back to users on the left. I think we skipped a step here somewhere. Okay, go to add user. Log cat collector. Okay. Click on that and hit next. No. Click on next tags and hit next review and create user. 
Yay. OK, now your keys are right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy these keys. Copy. We're going to put them in a little notepad. I'm putting them off screen, so you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm, I'm copying them down. So we have access key ID. And we have secret access key. Is there anybody that had problems setting up an Amazon account that wants my keys? I'm going to pull this away so my key isn't available for all the internet to see. Cool. So we've done that. that there. So next, we don't want to close the browser. We just want to click on the close button right here. See this close. Make sure you copy your two keys down somewhere safe, and then hit close. You'll notice now that we have a key here. This is how we would access that if we needed to go and check that out. Okay. Next thing we need to do is we're going to create an S3 bucket for our app. Okay. So under services, there's going to be an S3 link under the storage section. That storage section has three. So we're going to click on that. Cat Collector 420. Oh, these have to be unique. Apparently, I came up with something that was supposed to be clever. Um, oh, my SageMaker stuff's up there, too. I'm, I'm uh, getting a that says. Um, my services may take up to 24 hours to fully activate. They won't. You Let's should be fine. Contact support. Uh, so it won't let you click on services S3? I did. And it just automatically takes me to this page that says your service sign up is almost complete. Uh, I did provide, a, I did register. You registered back when we like when I asked you guys to do that earlier, right? Not like minutes ago. Yeah. Okay. Can I see that? I might just have to give you my keys when it becomes time. Okay. Check your email. Have you gotten any requests for? You haven't gotten any emails from them. I did. Yeah. And I, I uh, that was the verification email again. If I go back and refresh. Okay, well, um, I would just if, if there's nothing you can do in your email, just watch along and when it gets to the point where you have to give you keys, I'll just let you use my key. We'll just go from there. New biggie. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a bucket. Your buckets have to be uniquely named, as you can see here, which is why I have to use funny names for mine. Uh, I had Raffle Cat Collector and Cat Collector 420 and Cat Collectors. So we're going to create a bucket. So let's click Create Bucket. Okay. We're going to have to put bucket name, region. If you're on the East Coast, probably just leave it as this. Realistically, we should all just use this Virginia one. It's not going to make your app faster if you use one that's closer to you. For the purposes of collecting cats, it doesn't make a big deal difference. So just use, everyone use this US East, North Virginia, US East one. We're just going to do that. Okay. Your bucket name 
has to be unique, globally unique. So I'm going to do C4T collector. Choose bucket. Oh, did I just try to do search? No. Oh, oh just, I'm not paying attention to the instructions. It's down here. Okay. So we're putting the name of our bucket in. You can put it whatever you want. We're going to uncheck uncheck the block all public access bucket or checkbox. Check that you acknowledge that that's okay because it's okay if things become public. And then we're going to click next. Some of the stuff is new. That's okay. So we're going to get create bucket. And it should say right, right there. I wonder why that says public, but that says objects can be public. Check that out. Hang on just a moment here. Never have public access. Aha. Maybe. David, say things. Try editing the ACL. <laughs> and then give everyone list and read and yeah. Yup. Interesting. Let's see if that makes it look like, you know what I'm going to do? Here's what we're going to do before I make any changes. I'm going to go look and see what one of my other ones says, because I have multiples. So let's take a look at that. Permissions. Let's go to IAS or ACL. There it is. No, I don't have access to everybody for that. So I'm not going to do that. Go back to go back a page. Scroll. This is different. Yeah. Okay. You might need to you think fill in the bucket policy. Yeah, I think you're it's right. Going, I think, yep. Okay. So let's just continue with the instructions then as they're written. So mine looks my screen is just looks very different. Um, I don't have these the next button that's showing on the Did you scroll uh, all the way down? Yeah, it just says it's an orange button that says create bucket, but um, yeah. That's fine. Yep. Okay. Did it work? You're good. Okay. Okay. So it says a bucket has been created. 
So let's go back to that list of buckets here. This is what everyone should be looking at, right? S3 buckets. Everyone sees this, right? If you're not looking at this, raise your hand. Okay, perfect. So th that's where we're going to continue. Okay. So click on our bucket name. We're going to go to permissions. We're going to click on the square bucket policy button, which doesn't exist anymore, but we can scroll down here and go to bucket policy. feel like that's what we need to do. Let's go to edit. And we got to edit. We have this option to go to policy generator. Everyone see policy generator? Anyone not see policy generator? Okay, let's click on that. Cool. So our type of policy is going to be an S3 bucket policy. We're going to allow, principal is going to be a star. AWS service is gonna stay the same. We're gonna leave, go down to our actions here and our actions should be get object. Select get object. Amazon resource name is going to be, copy this from the lesson, but instead of SEI cat collector, we're gonna put the name of our bucket. Anyone have problems with that? It needs to be identical to this with the exception of the name of the bucket. We all good? Anyone problems, comments, questions, concerns, musings, deep thoughts? Did, um, in the actions, you, can you tell me again what that was? It was get object. Get object. Mine? Okay. Hang on, let me see. Got it. Okay, I'm glad I asked. And then the ARN is copy and paste uh, the thing where it says cat collector with a star at the end. But change yes, but make sure the yeah. cat collector to whatever I called my thing. Precisely. All right, cool. Okay. Then we're going to click add statement. Once we've added statement, you're going to see that you've got a little statement down here, right? And the star allow S3 get object. Next, we're going to click on generate policy. And that's going to pop up this uh, policy JSON document. We're going to select everything here with the curly braces. We're going to copy that. Cool. And we're going to click close. Now we're going to go back to that main tab right over here. Just go back to your other tab because that should have opened it in the tab. And for our policy generator, we're going to paste what we just copied. And we're going to click on save changes. Successfully edited bucket, bucket policy. I have an unexpected error or unknown error. Let's check it out. Try clicking save again. Play. Click on uh, policy generator. And then 
type of policy. That's a star. You got to get rid of your cat collector. You, you want to replace what I with the SEI cl cat collector with the name of your bucket. Oh, my bucket is cat collector bucket GA. Is it SEI cat collector bucket GA? Oh, no, I didn't put that part okay. out. Okay. Fine. Click on add statement. Now generate policy. There you go. Yay. Cool. Anybody else problems? Mine is did the same, I had the same error as hers, but um, I changed the name and it's still saying um, that it's incorrect. Let's check it out. Um, yeah, so I'm just doing So it. can I see the name of your bucket? So can you just tab over to the other window? So it is scroll all the way up. Yep, Cat is. collector app. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and actually, I just found my error. I put it accidentally put an R on the end of this. That's why. Okay. So never mind. I'm sure that I can fix it now. <laughs> Could you actually re just replace that R, like remove the R in the policy network, uh, or do you have to do a whole new form? No idea. I would do a whole new one just to be sure though. I'll wait for you. Let me know when you're good, Lulu. So I just tried with Tyler suggested it. Just okay, so you're just gonna make a new one real quick. Okay, let me know when you're good caught up. I'm good. Yay. Okay, cool. That's it. That's our Amazon configuration. Lesson's almost over. Well, not really, but sort of. That's the hard part ish. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to install the official Amazon AWS software development kit for Python. It's called Boto3. So, we're going to be bring up VS Code again. Let's go shut down our server for good practice. And inside of our virtual environment, we're going to type pip3 install photo3. Don't ever put your AWS or any other secret keys in your source code. Somebody tell me why. Then the world will see it. Is that will be posted on GitHub, yeah. Yeah, both of you are correct. Brady was a little bit more dramatic about it, but yeah, pretty much. The world will see it. You don't want that, right? What we're gonna do is we are going to make a hidden file in uh, in our on our root directory. So what we can do is let's go ahead and open up a terminal. 
and we're going to make it secret directory. Remember, if we put a dot at the beginning of something, that's going to make it secret. It's going to make it hidden. It's not really secret. It's just hidden. So if I, remember, if I do ls on my root directory, I see that. But if I do ls hyphen a, it shows me everything. Oh, look at all that stuff. You're going to notice I've got a directory right here called AWS. So that's what we're going to do. Y'all are going to touch that. You're going to do mkdir tilde slash dot AWS. I can't do that because mine already exists. Inside of that, so I'm going to go cd dot slash AWS, excuse me, cd dot AWS. Now I'm inside of that AWS directory. I can type ls. Apparently I have rock, paper, scissors in there. <laughs> I don't know what the heck that's doing. What? what? That's funny. Oops. Okay. Anyway, so inside of my AWS uh, directory, I have a file called credentials. And those credentials are going to be my Amazon bucket credentials that I use for my applications. That's where they're hidden. They're hidden locally. This file, this credentials file doesn't get uploaded. You can see it's called credentials. That doesn't get uploaded to GitHub. It's not even in my project directory. It's on my root directory in a hidden folder called the AWS. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up and we're gonna put our keys there. So we could type code space credentials. Actually, you have to touch the file first because you don't have it. So you have to do touch slash AWS credentials. And if you do code credentials, it should bring up a blank file. Mine's not going to be blank because my keys are in it. Those are my old keys. Let me get rid of my old keys. Exposed. I know. I'll have to go delete that bucket later. Okay, so this is what your file should look like. It should have this default up at the top. We're gonna just copy and paste this stuff here from the lesson into, into this. And for your secret key, remember how we copied and pasted those to a little text editor? We're gonna put them in here. I'm gonna carry mine off the screen so I don't get hacked. Michael, I will send you my bucket info. Please don't hack me. Can I also get that, please? No. Yes. Thank you. I, I'm just going to post it in Slack for anyone that needs it. So, uh, you know what? I'll just copy and paste the contents of the file. That makes a whole lot more sense. Here is that for anyone that needs it. Don't steal my bucket. In fact, I'll probably just go delete this bucket after the lesson so it stops working. But there you go. Make sure you save that if you don't have auto save turned on, which all of you should. So now this screen's coming back over here. We good? So what have we done so far? Created a set and file to store our keys in. Cool. What did we do before that? Made a bucket. Right. Which is just a place to put all of our stuff, right? We can store our pictures online because we're going to upload a whole bunch of cat pictures. That's what we did. We created a bucket for them. We got all the information, our secret access key and our uh, access key ID. So we have an ID and a key that we're going to use to access that bucket. We're not going to put those files or those keys directly into our app because that would be bad and we'd never get jobs. So we put them in a secret file on our machine or secret directory, hidden directory that we're going to reference when we use this app. So we're going to have something that's similar to what? And express. What did we use in express to do the same thing? Dot Exactly. 
env. What else could we put in here that might be handy that would prevent us from getting messages from GitHub when we uploaded things to the internet? API keys. Or? Our Django Jonathan. secret key. Oh, yeah, remember? We had that secret Django key that it's like, hey, don't put that on the internet. We can put that here. So does this mean we that- We wouldn't put it here. We put it somewhere else, but yeah. Okay. So every time you're using a different Amazon bucket, you would have to change this file since it's a global file. Okay, got it. Or you could just reference a different file. You can reference whatever the heck you want. You're gonna see that here in just a minute. So this is just, this is analogous to what we did with the .env, but instead of having one .env, technically you can put these files wherever you want on your machine and just reference them once we get into the secrets that we're gonna to use to get to get there when we get there. So let's get back to some stuff we know, right? This has all been foreign, fun, new information. Now we need to add a photo model. So let's go back into our code and add our model. So we're gonna to go to our models. And our model is gonna be pretty simple, right? All we need is a URL that's gonna hold the URL for our picture and the cat. The cat's gonna be a foreign key, right? It's gonna reference the primary key of the cat that we're taking a picture of or uploading a picture of. Okay, so let's go down here, da, 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 all the way to the bottom. Make sure we're tabbed over all the way. Class, photo, models, dot model. URL equals models dot character field. We're going to give it a max length of 200. Should be more than enough. We're going to give cat a foreign key. We're going to set up cat as our foreign key. Models dot foreign key cat. Make sure we add our cascade so that if we delete the picture, the association doesn't go away or does go away on delete equals models dot cascade and we're going to print off some info so that it displays properly we're going to say hey this is a photo for this cat f thunder str self return i'm just going to copy this because i don't want to mistype it Good times. What needs to happen next? Make migrations. Mm -hmm. Before we do anything else, we just updated our model. We added a model. Let's do it. Python 3 manage.py make migrations. Create model photo. Looks good. And then migrate. We get our green. Anybody not get the green okay? I didn't. Um, I did make migrations and it brought up the new model, but then when I did um, make migrations, it said no changes detected. You did make migrations twice or you did make migrations and then migrate? I did. Um, hold on. Um, I have a question. So what this is doing, is it for us to upload photos or is it for users to, for the ability to upload photos? I'm a little confused on what's happening. Both. Both. I mean, you're going to deploy your app, right? Whoever logs into your app can upload photos. And it gets saved to AWS? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Did you get that figured out, Jennifer? I did, thank you. Cool. 
So we have our model set up. We're going to add our photo URL, add photo. We need a, a, a URL to go and add a photo, right? We want a path. We're going to add a path to our URL uh, patterns that's going to match a request sent when a user submits a photo. Because we're going to have all this built into built into our page. We're just going to pop that link on a page that goes to our, our request. So let's type that in. Let's go to our URLs.py, add it to the list. Man, that's a list. We've got a lot of URLs here. Path. We're going to call it cats slash. We're going to have to give it the uh, the cat, the ID of the cat that we're adding the picture to. Add photo. Add underscore photo. Views dot add photo. That's what we're going to do next. We're going to go right and add photo view function. And again, URL template tag purposes name equals add photo. Follow over the column. We add other stuff later. Notice again, we're using the ID to capture that cat's ID. We're calling it cat underscore cat underscore ID. Okay. This is where things can get a little heavy. This is we're going to have to use that Amazon East thing. We use what Amazon East one, right? For Virginia. Yep. Okay. I'm going to go look at the docs for this just to make sure. It's Virginia. Okay. I'm going to hold on to that. Just leave that there just in case we need it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our model, or excuse me, into our view function, right? Views, here's views.py. We have to import some stuff here. We're going to import UUID and photo three and our photo model. So let's go up top. Uh, UUID again is, is uh, what, David? I never remember this unique identifier or something. Uh, universally unique ID, I believe. Okay. UUID and for photo three. And then we're going to add photo to our model imports. Where else should we probably add photo? Admin. Admin. Let's do it. Just for troubleshooting, it's always good to put that here. I don't even know if this is in the instructions, but I just like every time I add a model to my Django app, I'm going to put it in admin because I want to be able to screw around with it in there rather than having to go into a um, into a shell to do that. Cool. So we're going to go, sorry, back to our forms here. We're going to define a couple variables because we need to know a couple things, right? We need to know what the base URL is that we're going to be making our requests to for our photos. And we need to know what the name of our bucket is. So down at the bottom here, let's set some variables. Let's say S3 underscore base underscore URL equals, and as a string, we're gonna copy and paste whichever one of these buckets we're using. We all used Virginia. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that. I'll put that in Slack. Wait, were we supposed to use Virginia? 
if you're following the instructions that I gave you, yeah. Oh, okay. You can use whichever one you want, but for consistency's sake and so that we can copy and paste, I asked everyone to use Virginia. But if you use something other than Virginia, then go ahead and look it up on that list. So we're gonna paste that right in here. But remember, we need to have that HTTP S. So let's put that at the beginning here. So this is exactly what it should look like. I'm gonna copy this whole line. I'm gonna send it to y'all. Does the um, ending slash matter at all? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna follow the instructions. I'm gonna put it in there. Because I bet you it probably does something silly if I don't. So here's this. If you selected Virginia, you should be able to use that as your S3 base URL. And then our bucket is going to be whatever you called your bucket. Make sure you use your bucket name here. Don't use mine. Use your bucket name. And you know what? We're going to take a little break before we get into the next part, just to make sure everybody's nice and awake before we get there. So we're we're ending right here. We just entered our bucket as a variable. We're going to take 14 minutes. If you back at 10 past, we'll come back and we'll wrap this up. Ben, when you make changes to an admin, do you migrate again? You shouldn't or need to. Okay, just was wondering. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're all here. We have our buckets entered, our shortcuts, S3 base URL. I'm gonna share my screen so y'all can see what I'm talking about. So each file that we upload to S3 has to have a unique URL, right? So that we can identify between the different files that we're sending. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using S3 base URL bucket and a randomly generated key to build this unique URL. This URL will also be saved in the URL attribute that we, add, we put for each instance of a photo, right? We set that up in our model. So this ridiculous, function right here is going to be responsible for doing all of that. So what we're doing is we're having, we have this add photo, we're passing in our request and our cat ID, and we're taking photo will be the name attribute right here, input type equals file. So we're defining a file, request.files.get. So this is going to take our photo file from the user. If it's at an actual photo file, we're setting up S3 as our photo three client. We're exchanging, uh, we're creating a unique key for S3 by using UUID. So that's just creating this ridiculous file extension plus the name of the file. Um, and then we're going to try it, uh, the try accept. So we're gonna go ahead and try to upload the file, S3 to upload file object photo. This is just code that you get from Amazon. Like if you Google how or this, this part of it anyway, um, this is what we do. We just have to upload it using this information. And photo three knows to use the information that's hidden in our AWS hidden folder on our desktop to get our login credentials for Amazon. So that's how this is gonna work. So we can just copy and paste this entire function, put it in right down at the bottom here. So 
So that's the function to do that. This takes care of all of our photo upload stuff, assigns it a random ID and uploads it to Amazon Bucket. If there's an error, it's gonna trigger this accept because it's not gonna work in the try. Then it'll print, hey, we had a, a problem uploading your thing. And it's gonna bring us back to the detail page, which is where we're gonna put the UI for this. So we're gonna have a little button somewhere that says, hey, this is where we're gonna upload our picture. I forgot to ready a cat picture. So let me make sure I have a cat picture ready to go. Everyone take a moment and find a good cat picture because we're going to need that here in a second. Come on, I've got to have a good cat picture somewhere. I'm, I'm going to be silly and put a picture of my dog up instead of, instead of a cat. I think. Yeah. Like online or from our directory? Uh, from a directory. So you want it locally. Everyone find a good cat picture. Why do I not have any decent cat pictures on here? I'm just going to put a picture of a shark up because I don't have any pictures of my cats locally. That just seems to be the reasonable thing to do here. There it is. I found it. Okay. All right, we're good. Everyone make sure you have your cat picture. Sweet. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add our UI so that we have the ability to upload that cat picture from somewhere in our application. So how about the details page? We're going to display each image beneath the cat's detail card. We're going to show a no photos uploaded message if there are no uploaded photos for the cat. And we're going to show a form below the images to upload more photos. So what we can do is use Django's nifty four dot 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 empty template tags to iterate through each cat's photos like so. So we'll go into our details page here. And we're going to put that Where are we going to put that? One second. I'm just going to look to see where we have it so I don't put it in the wrong place. I'm going to put it right here. So I'll copy and paste this code for you guys here in just a second for all of it. But we're going to put it within our card for the cats, but beneath the card content. Right? No, slightly outside of our card, but beneath the card in the same column. So that's where that's going to live. And I, like I said, I'll copy and paste this for you guys here in a moment so you can see that. So that's where we're going to copy and paste this code. And we should, if we're running our server, be able to see that. Let's 
So we have no photos uploaded. So that's where our photos are gonna live. Okay. So that's where it's, that's where it's gonna live. Copy and paste this just in case for y'all. So put that in the right spot. Okay. We haven't uploaded any photos yet. So we're seeing the no photos uploaded div thanks to the empty tag that we gave that. Okay. We don't actually invoke methods within Django tags. Again, remember, so there's no parentheses here after this set all. Django automatically, automatically calls an attribute, attribute if it's a function. Um, filters, we know that, we can check the length. Good stuff. Okay, so form for uploading photos. Right beneath our no photos uploaded here, we're gonna add our form. So let's copy and paste our form. And that's just a action for the URL. Remember we had that add photo function that we wrote. We gave it that name so we can use our URL template tag to access that view function. Passing it the cat ID, URL. Now also, when we're using HTML forms to upload files, we have to add the ENC type equals multi-part form data attribute to the form tag. It's just, you have to do that. And other than that CSERF token, it's the same thing that we've ever done before, right? We're giving it a name, photo file. It's an input type, type is file. And we have our submit button. So we refresh the page. We got our little file here. Okay, another refresh, got our form. That should be it. Desktop. Cat picture, upload. We're uploading cat pictures. Oh, I see so many puzzled looks. This is my favorite part about this day. We're gonna go through, these are the worst troubleshooting errors, i.e. the best troubleshooting errors. Nick, your puzzled look gets to go first. How do we get, I, I can't see, give me one second. My copy paste added a bunch of stuff to my keys. So it's messing okay. everything up. I'm gonna copy and paste this uh, cat details again here for you. Um, no, I mean like my, my keyboard like copying and pasting oh. things adds a bunch of characters to things randomly sometimes. Um, and that, that did that to my API, my AWS. Oh. So I have to go into that. With Linux, if you're copying and pasting out of a terminal, you'll have to do control shift copy and control shift B or control shift C and control shift B in and out of a terminal. In a terminal, I have to do that, but it also yeah. still adds those weird characters. Oh, but weird. I wasn't in a terminal earlier and it still did. So I have to, it's going to take me. Okay. Anybody else issues? Who's seeing cat pictures? Well, at least a couple of you. Okay. I mean, my image is breaking. Is that just because it's too big? It could be. Have you tried a smaller image? Um. Well, not yet. I don't have any smaller images ready, but. Um, Here. I'll send you this one. This one's small and will work. Okay. My other question is, um, could this work for like PDFs? If we wanted to upload a PDF. I don't know. I would imagine. I don't know if your browser would, you know what? Let's try it. Let me find a PDF. Here's a PDF on my computer. I can put up that PDF. Upload. Nope. Hmm. Is the file there? Let's try to load image. 
open image a new tab. Oh. So yeah, look at that. I could download it. So the file's there. It's just not displaying it as an image. So, so it's I, sending, it's uploading that file to Amazon, but it's just not displaying it because it's not an image. Um, I'm trying to think about my project uh, where I kind of want to do that. Is there a way to like configure it so where like you can upload a file, but it would display as like a link instead of actually displaying the image? Say that again. Like if you wanted to upload a PDF instead of having a broken image, it would just have like the file name there for you to click and download. I'm sure you could do that, yeah. Because we know the name of the file that we're giving it and we name it. You could totally do that. And you could see right here, if we look in our photos, it's showing up as the URL. So that I'm sure there's a way that you could get that to append just the, because remember we're giving it this name, this A, yeah. ba -da -ba -da -ba, whatever. So you could totally do that. Okay, cool. Again, this is one of the great reasons that admin portal is great because you can log in here and see exactly what it is that you're doing and see where you're, if you're getting an error, is the file uploading? That's step one. And if you're getting something in your admin portal, then you're good to go. If we wanted to have the photo appear on the list page as well, like would, how, I'm not sure how that would, would we have to like somehow grab the image model and put it on the list page? Like how does that work exactly? Well, how are we getting the photos normally? The photos are attached to what? Uh, they're attached to the model that we're using, like, and from the view. See this right here? Cat objects that's coming right through. Right here. For photo in cat.photoset.all. Because remember, because we're setting it up, Django is smart and Django knows that our cat is going to have associated photos, just like it has associated feedings. So if you're passing the cat, you could do a, a loop in there and print all the pictures for your cats. Totally, totally doable. I'm right. getting a parse error. I'm getting an error as well. For the AWS credentials. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pause the recorder so we can see your credentials. It looks like the file is being uploaded, but then whenever I actually press upload, it's not being created. And I checked the admin and it's definitely not making any photos. Um, and I just started I, to run into as well. Yeah, I'm a little confused because I, I copied and pasted the both the, um, the view function code. Mm -hmm. And then I also, um, I ended up copying over your code for the actual detail page because I thought maybe that was the issue. Um, but when I'm here and I try to choose a file, this is like a small mm -hmm. cat photo. So it looks like it's good to go, but then when I actually hit upload, nothing happens. Okay, let's see what happens in your terminal. Yeah. Um, hold on, let me make this. An error occurred, uploading file to S3. All right, my bad. Um, so? Post. That unfortunately could be any number of things. Um, I would start, <laughs> let me pause the recorder again so we can check out your credentials file. The errors that we just saw and didn't debug because they had sensitive keys um, are all typically due to something going wrong when you're making your buckets. Um, it, we see it every time we go through this lesson. There are so many little tiny steps that even if you miss one small thing, it can mess everything up. So what I recommend doing is if you had a problem with what we just did or an error using the code that we just did, just try starting it again. Once you get into the rhythm of making a bucket, it'll take you three minutes to do it because you know what you're looking for and what you're clicking. I would try it again. And if you're repeatedly having issues, again, this is not required for your Finch collector because of that exact reason. We have so many problems with this um, because it's just, there's so many steps that if you get one small thing wrong, it can foul everything up. Um, 
but that's that's really all I can recommend is just trying again because there's so many steps. You miss one small thing, it just doesn't work. Um, who who is still also having issues? Are we all everyone seeing cat pictures now? Um, I did return finally a um, like a problem. It says AWS access key we provided does not exist in our records, but I'm using the exact same thing you gave us. You're using mine. Yeah. Did you change the cat collector, the name of the bucket to cat collector, like C4T collector on your views.py? Yeah, that's right. You want to share your screen? I'll pause so we're not sharing key information. So do we have any other errors? That was such fun, wasn't it? We're going to put off off until tomorrow because I knew this was going to be a day. Um, it always is. Uh, we'll do off first thing in the morrow. First thing in the morrow. I like that. Um, plus, I want to teach again. So win-win, right? Um, you're going to go implement this now if you want in your Finch collector. If you don't want to implement this in your Finch collector, don't um, just work on your Finch collector, work on your projects. When are we doing project approvals? When do you have to have your idea in? In Wednesday? Tomorrow. At, at the absolute latest Wednesday, because you're starting your projects on Wednesday, probably want to have your idea approved before then, right? Can we Where talk can about find... security get? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, what's your question? I was about to ask, what, do we have like the project requirements? I was just, that was going to be my question. It's like, we're just like reading each other's minds here. Um, where can you find the project requirements? And those were already sent uh, a while ago from this live right channel. Now. I'll send them again, Nick, for you. Thank you, Sebastian. I just sent them. No. Oh. Actually, never mind, Sebastian. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can you can get your things back. I didn't want them. <laughs> Cold. Damn. So those are your project requirements. Please read through that. Try to get your ideas. Does it say first. your planning materials are due? Anyone go. Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, Bye. End of class. Yeah. <gasps> That's tomorrow. Your outcomes tomorrow, you will not, I, I'm saying that, right? They don't have outcomes tomorrow, right? We're going to give them time to work on outcome stuff, but you don't have outcomes like proper tomorrow. So you're not going to like leave us. I have a quick question about the group or the um, project. On here, okay. you have both like solo and group, and I assume everyone's doing solo, but does that mean we need to have all four cred options even if we're solo or is it on here it says if you're solo three of the four yeah if you're solo you use three of the four okay if you want to work in a group you're allowed to work in a group we did not if have anyone pick that option last time i'm gonna tell you right now before you go getting giddy about that that working in a group for a project like this is exceptionally difficult because if you have issues with your database, oh, it's not a good day. Not, you're not going to have a good time. If you want to challenge, work in a group. You have a migration party. Oh my gosh, the migration party. You're going to have headaches galore. You're it's really awesome. selling it. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. It's your last unit. We got less than a week, well, what, a week, a week and a day left in the class. I just, I don't want to. I don't want to try to sell you snake oil like right now. It's like, let, let's just, let's have nice, simple, easy, well done projects. You don't want to work in a group. Or, you know, if you like hurting yourself, then go ahead and do that because it's going to be a painful experience if you try to work in a group. Do we also have CS work for tonight? Any links to do? Sure. Who've been wrong? 
David, also, when are we going to talk about um, GitHub tokens? Oh, what a good question, Patrick. Um, Let me stop this recording because we're getting off topic and I'll make another one so that David can chat about that.